Thank you for tuning in to my YouTube channel. Uh, my guest today is a man who is best known as the lead man of Jethro Tull, with various business interests as well. But today, we talk about something completely different. What is your sexual orientation? Well, it's interesting you ask me that, because <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Um, as I say, I'm 60, or about to be 66 years old, but um, so far, it's... Um, it's been a completely straight um, uh, 60, well, I suppose uh, 56 years or so. Um, but, you know, it's never too late, is it? I mean, I was talking, talking, to, um, talking to Mark Armand, uh, oh, an yes. 80s uh, um, um, rock star, pop star. Pop and star. Uh, we, mm. we were having lunch the other day, and, um, and I, I, I don't know whether we... I, I think I volunteered. It was because he was um coming to to be a, a guest of mine on a show and so we uh, we were talking about which bit he might want to sing and one of the parts he was drawn to involved uh, uh, it w- what was a was sort of in character when i sing it it, it is a uh, it is about um gender insecurity and and the problems of dealing with parents and and how to explain that or react to the disapproval and so on and so he was naturally drawn to that and i and i I said, well, you know, it's kind of the bit that I usually do this bit because, you know, if anyone's going to whistle or, or shout or, or use any, you know, unfortunate language, you know, it's better that it comes to me because I can take it on the chin and put them in their place. And um, and so we sort of got around to this, uh, this discussion. I said, because the thing is, you know, really, I think people make, make assumptions and, and they're not always right because mm. I've got girly fingers. Mm. You know, I'm a flute player. Mm. And, you know, a lot of the things that I might do or have an interest in, you know, there's a little bit of a kind of feminine side there. So I've mm. always rather thought that it's, you know, it's never cut and dried. It's never black and white. And frankly, I've not had a decent offer yet, but it's never too late to change your mind. Well, I hope the day gets good for you. <laughs> I shan't be bending over to, 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 to tie my shoelaces in the tube tray when I get to London later today. Yeah, though. well, but, I mean, I wouldn't walk down the corridors yeah, the of this studio. The thing is, if, if, if you're like me mm. and you're of this age and you're a little bit, of, you know, Saggy of butter, less firm of thigh than of <laughs> days gone by. And if, if I was ever going to get a good offer from a, from a really great looking guy, I think I would have had it already. I'm it, kind of coming around to the idea the chances are looking slim. There's an old saying that I couldn't be gay because I couldn't be turned down by men as well as women. Yeah, well, there you go. You see, it's uh, it's all about it's all about insecurities, mm. and I, I've never been insecure about. It. I, I recognise my. My, my feminine traits, but um, you know, on the other hand, if you have an interest an interest in combat handgunning or whatever else, then it doesn't quite fit the the idea of the the foppish, um, you know, ambivalent rock star who seems to be all things to all people. I mean, I, I kind of admire people like Cat Stevens and, and David Bowie because they had that that kind of sexual mm. um, ambivalence that, that made them intriguing characters. And, and um, you know, I, I always sort of rather admired that, but I, I never really had to bring it into my music until until in the last year or so, because it was the subject material of some, some, some uh, you know, some songs. Mm. And, um, and then when you actually come to grips with it and you actually have to be in that character, it's very illustrative because you find yourself, to all intents and purposes, taking on elements which you're defiant about mm. because i you know i've always been a, a supporter of 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 that kind of gender equality mm. uh, of, of, the, of the freedom of choice and and lack of prejudice and you know in, in showbiz generally it's fine because you know we, we, we meet all kinds of people we grow up with them there yeah. there are friends our workmates uh, regardless of who they are and where they come from and you know indeed their, their cultural and racial origins i mean these things in in my world they just don't register on the dial you know yeah. they're just they're just you just take it for granted but in, in other in other walks of life, of course, you can be you can be marginalised, penalised, and um, and victimised, and and so you know it's always nice to stand up for folks um, when you can, and um, the more the merrier. Well, going back to what you were saying about uh, being an arms dealer, it, it brings a completely different meaning to he's packing a big magnum, doesn't it? It certainly does, and um, you know the difference between carrying uh, carrying a flute in my pocket and uh, and, a, and a small, carefully crafted handgun. Either way, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you've been here today, Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a great pleasure. Nice to talk to you. Take care. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. Cheers. Education, micromanaged, and the 